Last season, our inconsistent form saw us bottle the chance to secure European football, but with a lot of work to do to take this team to the next level, it's time to begin Season 2 at Everton Football Club. And as ever, if you're enjoying the series so far, please feel free to like and subscribe, and let's get into today's episode. Now, despite the board suggesting that a ninth place finish last season in the Premier League was good enough for them, it most certainly was not good enough for me. And seeing the level of investment that's going to be required to try and improve this starting eleven, I am making some bold calls, transfer listing several of my senior high-profile players to try and see if I can bring in some funds to improve this team ahead of the new season. Now, it's been strongly suggested that I send my young academy graduate, Brian Willems, out on loan this season to try and get some much-needed first-team football. And with me only having the 74-rated Nathan Patterson as my best right-back, along with the retiring Seamus Coleman and the retiring Ashley Young in reserve, it was also suggested that I potentially try and retrain Ben Godfrey to becoming a right-back in his place. However, with a brilliant offer of £6.7 million on the table for Newcastle United, he becomes the first man to say goodbye to the Everton faithful as he departs in what the board are describing as an excellent deal. He's followed out the door pretty swiftly by Abdullah Decore, the man who was dispossessed in the starting 11 by Deli Ali, in another excellent deal to Real Sociedad worth £7.5 million. And there's more defensive reinforcements departing the club as Michael Keane departs to Nice for just under £4.5 million. Those departures have helped bump our transfer budget up to £44 million ahead of the new season. But we're still a hell of a lot of work to be done to try and improve this squad. And with the board objective significantly increasing with them expecting us to finish in a Europa League spot this season, once again I think I'm going to have to start getting creative as to how I'm going to improve this squad. Now the departures of Keane and Godfrey at the back have left me with just three senior centre-backs, one of those being the returning Mason Holgate from his loan last season and a James Tarkovsky at 31 years of age who isn't going to be the type of player I want to build the team around for the foreseeable future. And so making an improvement in that area is going to be the very first thing I'm going to target at the start of this transfer window and thanks to you guys I clearly now have a very long list of centre-backs who potentially I might want to try and approach. And with this being a marquee signing for the club and someone who's potentially going to come in and help build the foundations of Everton Football Club moving forward, it was vitally important that I bring someone in who was young, offered us a great deal of potential, but also had Premier League experience and was looking to make the next step up in his career. And that is why I have chosen the former Crystal Palace leader at the back in Mark Gay to become our very first signing of this summer transfer window ahead of the new season at an absolute bargain of just £22.3 million plus Mason Holgate. As you can see, the board think it's an excellent deal. And with him just being 23 years of age, already 80 rated and immediately coming in and becoming the best centre-back at the club, it's not hard to see why the board and the fans alike are so excited. Now with Abdoulaye Decore departing, leaving Deli Ali as the only recognised central attacking midfielder at the club, I think it's only right that that is the position we turn to next. And once again, thanks to you guys, there are some wonderful options for me to choose from on my shortlist. Now this man, Tommaso Baldanzi, is certainly my number one choice. Just 21 years of age and 80 rated, he can certainly come in, immediately improve the starting 11 and have a big impact on our career mode progressing forward. However, with him being almost £40 million in terms of the asking price, I think that might just push our budget a little bit over the edge. And so once again, I've decided to turn my attention to another player with Premier League experience and another player who will be keen to make the next step up in his career for a team that will be challenging for European football this season. He's someone with over 35 appearances for Brentford and someone who's eager to make the move to Everton Football Club to become our second transfer of the summer as he joins for £19.8 million. Once again, he's another man with high attacking and defensive work rate and fantastic stats right across the board. He's someone who does have that something special and someone whom I am confident will offer us versatility and a great deal of potential moving forward. Now, with the departure of Dan Juma back to his parent club Villarreal and the departure of Mudrik back to his parent club Chelsea, the biggest question was what am I going to do on the left-hand side of my midfield? And so I put the question to you, which of these two players should I sign again ahead of the new season or should I get rid of them both? And you made your feelings abundantly clear with Mudrik being the overwhelming majority that you want me to sign again for this season. However, now bearing in mind I've only got £14 million left to spend and if I was going to get him in on a permanent basis it's clearly going to cost me more than that. I have tried to make the approach to Chelsea to get him back in on loan ahead this season. Unfortunately though, they are not interested one bit and unfortunately it means that Mudrick will not be an Everton player in season two. And so with that in mind and with Dwight McNeil being the only player who can potentially play on the left-hand side of my midfield this season, I'm going to have to return to the shortlist of players that you've suggested to try and see if I can get a better option. Frustratingly though, looking at the asking price of most of these players, all of them go far above and beyond what my transfer budget can allow. That is all of whom, except for one man. He's a man who perhaps won't be known to too many people in this country, but someone who's got a lot of experience playing out for the Mexican national team. And I'm sure someone who will be absolutely delighted to make the move to the Premier League and finally get his opportunity to show what he can do in front of some English fans. As the Mexican Cesar Huerta joins Everton Football Club for 10 Point five million.
million pounds. Now, yes, he is only 76 rated, but with him being 23 years of age and having lightning pace and pretty decent stats right across the board, I'm hopeful he can be someone who can come in and make an impact and try and push the likes of Dwight McNeil and Bakayoko all the way for a starting spot this season. However, with that arrival leaving me with just two million pounds left to spend, and with me ideally wanting to bring someone in to challenge the likes of Beto and Dominic Calvert-Lewin up front this season in case either one of them fall out of form or run into an injury. Unless I can raise any additional funds, it looks like I'm going to be relying on Neil Mope to fill in that role for me this season. Now, I mentioned at the start of the episode that one plan I did have was to try and get a loan move for this young man, Brian Williams. However, with the departure of this man, Ben Godfrey, plus the measly £2 million transfer budget remaining, I've got no choice but to stick with the young man as my backup right back this season and to try and focus on improving his development plan to get the best out of the young man and improving the development plan of this man, Nathan Patterson, to try and see if he can develop that pretty average 74 rating as we continue in Season 2. However, just as we are about to start our first pre-season friendly, we are hit with even more bad news as Chelsea have come in with a £19.9 million offer for Amadou Anana, which apparently has met his release clause that I didn't even realise he had. And with me desperate to try and keep the young Belgian at the club, I'm doing everything I can to meet with him and his agent in person to see if we can thrash out a new deal and try and see if he can reject that offer from Chelsea instead. And fortunately enough, with me getting to agree to a contract extension, getting rid of the release clause and giving him a nice little salary bump, he is happy to accept my offer and continue his career at Everton Football Club for the foreseeable future. Speaking of pre-season though, now is time to get our very first game underway and it's now time to see whether or not these players have recovered from the southern break and are ready to try and take this team to the next level this season. And if the first 10 minutes of his career are anything to go by, Mikhail Damsgaard is about to put in a serious shift in Everton colours as that is all it has taken him to get on the score sheet in his very first game in an Everton shirt. Frustratingly though, is this a sign of things to come with Dominic Calvert-Lewin firing wide from a great opportunity as he picked off from where he left off last season in really poor form. And perhaps he's not the only one who left his shooting boots at home as Huerta, still getting used to life in an Everton shirt, seems to be missing the mark as well. So not the perfect start to pre-season that we were hoping for and perhaps due to such a small transfer budget it's not exactly the perfect window we were hoping for either. I think we've picked up a terrific signing in Mark Gay who's going to be the foundations of our defence for the foreseeable future and I think we've picked up someone who really does have that something special and is really going to take the fight to Deli Alley for that central attacking midfield spot. However with problems still potentially on the right hand side of our defence and not being particularly strong both on the left hand side of defence and on the left hand side of midfield I think we're going to be relying on a lot of our younger players like Amadou Anana, like Jared Branthwaite and like Johan Bakayoko to try and continue to grow and develop this season and really establish themselves as proper quality Premier League players this season. Speaking of the Premier League though, it is finally time to get down to business and we are starting this season in front of our home fans at Goodison Park as it is going to be Moneybags, Newcastle United, whom we're going to welcome in a game that we absolutely must get three points for and must hopefully start off the season in good form. And speaking of starting off the season, it's a new start in Everton Colours for three new players as my starting 11 begins with Jordan Pickford in goal, Patterson at right back, Gay will make his debut for the club and will get the captain's armband, Branthwaite will partner him and Hatter on the left hand side, Anana has Dam's guard in front of him with Bakayoko on the right, Huerta on the left and of course it's Dominic Cavalluin and Beto who partner each other up front. Here we go then, big game and a big, big start hopefully to season two here of this Everton career mode but with a pass like that, that is not the perfect way to get things underway. Dominic Calvert-Lewin, he struggled at the back end of last season and it looks like he's continuing with that hangover into season two. It is Dominic Calvert-Lewin though out to Patterson on the right hand side and he goes past the defender really nicely and releases Bakayoko on the overlap. Bakayoko's got space here to run into. Can he try and find a ball to the back post? Instead he was looking for Beto but Nick Pope made himself look big into Anderson for Newcastle. Nice ball up the line into Anthony Gordon. He's being challenged by that man Mark Gay. Brilliant stuff from the Englishman but now Lewis has it on the overlap. That plays it into Anderson again. Anana comes across though this time. Really good defending from Everton all round. But uh, Bakayoko goes and gives it away in a really dangerous position. And that is a whopping strike. And perhaps Jordan Pickford should have got on the end of it. I mean, yes, it was from outside of the area and it was a lot of power on the shot. But it seemed like it went straight down the middle. Where on earth was Jordan Pickford's positioning? Let's have a look at the replay. It's poor goalkeeping yet again from the Englishman. And frustratingly, Newcastle take the lead. Well, it seems like it's not just Dominic Calvert-Lewin who has a hangover from last season. It seems like I and the rest of the Everton players do. Anderson for Newcastle into Anthony Gordon. They have got their tails up here as Anthony Gordon tries to go past Mark Gay. He does go past him into on Nesri. He's now in the box and strikes again. And Newcastle double their lead inside five minutes. Well, the poor defending from the back end of last season has continued into the start of this season. He just walks through my defense 
defence and Pickford yet again doesn't do enough. Neither does Branthwaite to get in his way and Newcastle take a 2-0 lead. Well, it's been a woeful start here in the opening 25 minutes and I have to be honest, ever since I've switched to this 4-4-2 diamond formation, yes, we have had the odd result that's been pretty good, but I've really struggled with it and I can't quite get to grips as Hato tries to play it into Beto and he should have scored, but it's a huge save from Nick Pope and that is much better from another English goalkeeper. Perhaps I should have him in between the sticks, but Bakayoko now lines up a shot and Nick Pope again is equal to it. Brilliant save from the Newcastle goalkeeper yet again. Into Shaw. They are very much in the ascendancy. We can't seem to string two passes together at the moment. Anderson into Anthony Gordon. Lovely touch into the box. Does the dummy around Marquet and just puts it wide. Back at Yoko into Dominic Calvert-Lewin. He's got a run of Huerta up ahead of him. Can he find Huerta? Yes, he can, but he's offside. But it's been a really poor opening 45 minutes here at the start of season two. Not exactly how I would have planned to start this second season. We've got to hope that in the next 45 minutes, we give a much better account of ourselves into El Nejri. Lovely challenge, though, by Mark Gay. And now Beto is released. Can I try and release Huerta down the left hand side? It's a poor ball. And again, we just can't seem to find our rhythm here today. Into Bruno Guimaraes. Now El Nejri into Almiron. Almiron's been chased down by Onana. Can Onana put the challenge in? No, he can't. It's cut back into Bruno Guimaraes again. Now he has it on the edge of the box. He's shaping up to strike. He does strike. And he goes wide. Branthwaite out of defence into Dam's guard, who's come short to try and collect the ball. Plays a nice one into Beto. Beto all oh, tried to play it around the corner into Dominic Cavalu. And it was a good piece of defending from Shah. Beto. Back into Patterson. Much better response here from us at the start of this second half. But again, Shah is in the way. It's that final ball that has been the missing piece of the jigsaw puzzle so far for us in this game. Bruno Gimorai is now to try and play a ball forward into the path of El Nesri. Has he got the beating of Branthwaite? Yes, he does. Into Almiron. And Almiron should have tucked that one away. Should have made it 3-0. And we breathe a sigh of relief into Beto. Beto now turns, tries to play it into Dominic Calvert-Lew, and he's got an overlap here of both Bakayoko and Patterson. Patterson is the man who gets it, though, and Patterson will drive down the right hand side, tries to feed it across, gets the cross all wrong. Bakayoko now has it on the right hand side, shifts it onto his left, brings it in field, looks for Dominic Calvert-Lew, and he too switches it onto his left, looks for the ball to Puerta, gets it all wrong yet again. Now Nesri, nice pass into Anthony Gordon. Mark A comes across, though, with a thumping challenge and does a really good job of winning the ball back. And now Patterson to bring it out of defence, really nicely done from the young man, but then he goes and loses it in a dangerous position and Gordon now can try and be the man to hit us on the counter-attack and comes across though brilliant challenge from the Belgium and I knew there was a reason why I decided to renew his contract oh Newcastle wave after wave of attack here it's relentless Gordon though is blocked off by Mark Gay Anthony Gordon time after time after time we're getting exposed on the counter-attack here as Newcastle just cutting our defence to pieces here and what was Mikalenko on as a sub doing oh my word he handed it to Almiron Jordan Pickford is there and Almiron somehow got there before the English goalkeeper who's had an absolute mare all of the 90 minutes. I mean, this is just ridiculous. He got through one-on-one. -on -one. Jordan Pickford did well to come out. And then he just got himself all in sorts of trouble with him and Mark Gay. A total lack of communication. And the smaller man of the three in Almiron managed to sneak past the both of them and nod it into an empty net. Jordan Pickford should have got two hands to it. He didn't. Shambles at the back. And it's a shambles of a scoreline as we lose 3-0 here at Goodison Park. Well, it's a shocker. An absolute shocker. And one that leaves us in 20th place. Rock bottom of the Premier League after our first game back. However, I've got to be honest. I really do believe that these players are better than some of the performances they've been putting out over the last few episodes. And yes, whilst you did choose the 4-4-2 diamond as your preferred formation, I've just got to be honest, I just cannot get on with it. We're getting counter-attack left, right and centre. We're leaving acres of space in the midfield. And so with that in mind, I am deciding to shift instead to this 4-3-3 attack-minded formation. It's more of a ticky-tacker style, so hopefully we can get a bit more control and possession in the game. Yes, it means that Dominic Calvert-Lewin will be the sole striker up front, and it means I will be sacrificing Beto, who's going to drop to the bench. However, it does allow me to bring James Garner back into the fold in central midfield who had formed a fairly decent partnership with Anana, and hopefully that will give me a better shield in front of my back four and with Spurs up next as our very next Premier League game we've got a brilliant opportunity to test ourselves against some real competition and test to see whether or not this new formation can be the formation that we stick with for the foreseeable future in this second season in this career mode and as you can see I have also made some changes to the starting 11 that started against Newcastle Pickford keeps his place in goal but Patterson starts at right back. It's a return to the starting 11 for Tarkovsky as he retains his captainship and he partners Branthwaite
quite in the centre along with Hato on the left. Anana once again is partnered by James Garner with Damsgaard playing in the centre behind Dominic Cavalu in up front. Baki Oko on the right and Dwight McNeil comes in on the left hand side of midfield. So here we go then, the opportunity to pack more men into midfield, the opportunity to try and see if we can play a completely different way here to try and see if we can get some necessary control in this game. But just as I say that, Tarkovsky goes and gives the ball away really easily and Hyungmin Son is away now into Troy Parody strikes and oh my word, it's just taken five minutes for Tottenham to penetrate our defence yet again. What is happening on this career mode? The last few episodes, defensively, we've been an absolute shambles and Jordan Pickford in goal has been a total and utter liability. He's supposed to be my best player, but he's just been beaten from all angles so easily. He's got to do better there. It's so poor. It's Tottenham 1-0 into Hyungmin Son. Hyungmin Son down the left hand side. Tries to go past Garner. Does go past Garner. And Dombele now, the forgotten man for Spurs, wins a corner. And it's one that Kulusevski's going to take and they're shaping up to take this one short. They do take it short. It's James Garner who follows the ball out. Doesn't do a good enough job of winning it back. And now it's Troy Parrott, the goal scorer out wide into Kulusevski. He goes central into Hoybier. Hoybier back to Troy Parrott. Where are my defence? No one's putting a challenge in. It goes out for another corner. Short into Garner. This Tottenham press is relentless at the moment. We can't seem to find a way past it. As Dwight McNeil though manages to wriggle away from the challenge. Does do a really good job and feeds in Hato down the left hand side. And this is much better from Everton now. Hato to try and drive down. He's not going to have the beating of Van der Ven for pace. So instead he's going to cut it back into the path of Anana. Anana looks for someone, anyone to try and play the ball to. Plays it into Bakayoko. He looks to strike with his right. And in the end gets the strike all wrong. It's blocked. And Spurs get it clear. Hoybier, Spurs playing it out of defence in typical Ange Postacoglu style. But they've done a really good job of releasing it to Kulusevski. Who's being chased down by Hato. And turns it back into the path of the inverted fullback Pedro Porro. Anana comes across though. Wins it well. Now Brantwaite can play it into Dwight McNeil. He can look for the overlap of Hato. Really good stuff here from Everton. This is much better. Now into Dominic Cavalu. And he can take it into the box. Dominic Cavalu and shapes it up on his right. Gets it all wrong. Well that's the first real clear cut opportunity we've created in both this game and the one against Newcastle but it's a, it's just an opportunity that we didn't take and once again Dominic calvert is really struggling in front of goal. Smalling down the line into Heungman Son he's blocked off by Patterson really good job and Patterson now feeds in uh, Garner. Garner can look out wide to Bakayoko he tries to play it forward again Dominic calvert is not going to have the beating of pace of Mickey van der Ven but Bakayoko will win the ball back really high and he strikes on his right straight at Vicario another big opportunity goes begging Patterson into Garner. This is much better from Everton. We seem now to have just got to our rhythm here as Dominic Cavalluin's played in and yet again he's missed another huge opportunity. Well Damsgaard was on for his first assist in an Everton shirt and Dominic Cavalluin could not take advantage. He couldn't have got an easier opportunity. Tarkovsky's played it in but he can't get his head on it properly. It's not a down to McNeil. He plays it into Branthwaite. Anana now will turn. Can he try and play a ball down the line? No he can't. It's blocked off. Anana tussling though with Pedro Porro as the referee blows for half time. But it was a terrible opening. Five to 10 minutes but after that we seem to get a little bit of a grip on this game and we actually had three really good opportunities that we should have scored all of them we didn't take them and unfortunately for us it remains 1-0 Dwight McNeil will win that one back and Dwight McNeil now can stretch his legs and go down this left hand side as there's no sign of Pedro Porro can he find a ball into the box though Dwight McNeil tries to play it across Mickey van der Ven with the challenge he manages to win it back from him though and now he gives it to Damgaard Damsgaard into James Garner he shifts it around and in the end it goes off for a Spurs goal kick Moretti for Spurs Dwight McNeil came across he's had a decent game so far he's really trying to see if he can cement himself as our starting left back. Can he get there ahead of Pedro Porro? No, he can't though. Good defending from the Spaniards. Patterson with the throw. Goes short into Garner. Garner into Damsgaard. Damsgaard round the corner. Back to James Garner. Garner feeds this one into Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Really good stuff here from Everton. Calvert-Lewin tries to play it across. McNeil didn't make the correct run. And yet again, there's another chance that goes begging. And the for Spurs. Out to Odoggi on the left-hand side. He plays it back into Hoybier. Odoggi takes it on again. Really nicely done here from Spurs. They play it into Ndombele. He finds a ball into Moretti. Anana tried to come across the challenge. Didn't do a good enough job. He's played out wide to Kulusevski on the right-hand side. He's going to go try and go past Mikolenko on as a substitute. The Ukrainian did a really good job of winning the ball back. And now, can he try and release uh, Huerta? He doesn't. And in the end, the two of them get their wires mixed up. And Spurs have it again into Lukman. Lukman plays it across into Ndombele. And Spurs double their lead. Well, yet again, it's even more frustration for Everton. After doing all the good work of getting our foothold back into this game. Slack defending yet again. And we throw it all away. It's Ndombele, the forgotten man for Spurs, who doubles their lead. It's 2-0 into Bakayoko. He takes it on really nicely and Bakayoko plays it back into James Garner who's done a really good job of skipping past a couple of challenges and drives into the penalty area here. James Garner across to Beto on as a substitute 
And with just under 10 minutes remaining, Beto gives us a lifeline here at the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium. Well, again, that extra man in midfield paying dividends here. James Garner able to drive forward. And it was Beto on as a substitute for a poor Dominic Calvert-Lewin, who scores our first goal of the season and his first goal of the season. A tap in inside the six-yard box. They don't come much easier than that. But we have a lifeline back into this game. It's 2-1. The big question is, though, is it too little too late with about five minutes remaining on the clock? plus stoppage time here we've got to win the ball back from Spurs get it into their half and try and see if we can get it into the back of the net but frustratingly Spurs are going to have a free kick here and one they're going to take short Pedro Porro down the left hand side where on earth is Mikalenko when you need him Pedro Porro into Hoybier into Pedro Porro again fires it across Lookman what was my defence doing what on earth was Jordan Pickford doing just static on his line it's a total and utter shambles yet again well Spurs have just retained possession and look at this it's just a Slack cross into the box. Jordan Pickford just static on his line. He should have come out and claimed it. He didn't. A complete miscommunication between the two defenders yet again. And the small man in Adamola Lookman is able to get in ahead of the two of them. And Everton are now down 3-1 here. Well, we're two games into the season. We're two losses down. And we've conceded six goals and only scored one. We're rock bottom of the Premier League table with a minus five goal difference. Jordan Pickford has had an absolutely shocking start to season two. And as for everyone else, morale just seems to be getting lower and lower. And so with barely any money left to spend to try and improve this squad, I'm going to be relying on your advice now more than ever to try and see what you think I should do to extract a little bit better form and a little bit better performances out of these players. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. But as for today, that is the end of the episode. I hope you have enjoyed it and hopefully I'll see you again next time. Thanks for watching.